So these are Swedenborg's labels for these two levels of the mind. And as he describes them in his writings, something he makes very clear from the beginning is that the first thing we got to learn about these two is that they're distinct. That they are separate from each other. They're not just two parts of the same thing. There's a separation there. He talks about it in Secrets of Heaven 6843. He says... We cannot approach the deity with our body the way we approach other people. So you can't just walk up to God. Only with our mind and therefore in thought and will. There is no other route to the deity because divinity transcends the realm of space and time. In us, divinity is pre present in what are called states, specifically states of love and states of faith, and therefore states of the two mental faculties of will and thought. You can see he's talking about this really important process of trying to approach the deity. And so he goes on here to say, they, these are the means by which we can approach the deity. So in, in will and in thought, right? You got that. Now watch what he says here. People are not aware of this because they do not realize that their inner levels are distinct from their outer levels, or that some thoughts go deeper and deeper and some shallower. Since they do not know any of this, they cannot reflect on it. So he's talking about something as big and important as approaching the divine in thoughts and feelings. And he says the reason that we don't know that we can, uh, you know, assuming we don't, is because we don't understand that there's these two distinct kinds of thoughts and feelings. And it makes sense. You think, oh, you can approach, approach God in your thoughts. Well, you know, I'm thinking about what I'll have for lunch. Like, where where's God in that? Or there's, if that one still seems spiritual to you, there's plenty of thoughts that I'm sure go through your head, our heads, on a daily basis that don't seem to approach God at all. And Swedenborg is saying it's because there's two categories of thought and two categories of feelings, this outer and inner, even though it doesn't always seem apparent to us from our vantage point. But we are going to look at how to tell those things apart, apart from each other, and we're going to tell this story through the house of the mind. And Swedenborg says that a house is not just a good metaphor for the mind, but correspondentially, it, it is an image of the mind. And we're going to begin really simple. Here's the, the, the simplest rendering of the house of the mind. It's got two parts, higher and lower. Now, you're going to hear higher and lower used interchangeably with inner and outer. Uh, higher being inner, lower being outer. That's a quirk of Swedenborg's description of spiritual geography, that whatever's higher is also more inward, whatever's lower is also outer. But the point is, you got your higher and lower mind. And reflection is something that happens because you can you have these two parts of the mind. So because you have sort of two different spaces from which to observe, you can observe yourself and understand that you have these two. For example, you can be in your higher state of mind looking at your lower state of mind and saying, that's a mess. And he talks about it a little bit in, uh, uh, in that and other areas, that, that you have the power to self-reflect, to say, eh, that's a dumb thing to think. Right, right. That's that's pretty amazing on its own. So we got these two levels, and it's really from the higher one that you get this vantage point on the lower one. But it's not that you automatically are using your higher mind for all kind of stuff. Actually, that it comes unopened. We've got to open up the higher mind in order to get it to work. And he describes how that process happens in Divine Providence 147. And we're going to play you that clip set to house animation. We have an earthly mind, a spiritual mind, and a heavenly mind. We are wholly locked into our earthly mind as long as we are caught up in our compulsions to evil and their pleasures. During all this, our spiritual mind is closed. However, as soon as we look into ourselves and realize that our evils are sins against God because they are against divine laws, and therefore try to refrain from them, the Lord opens our spiritual mind and comes into our earthly mind by way of its desires for what is true and good. You can tell it's something good. that the, the floor opens, the light comes in, there's this repentance thing. We're going to look at all those parts in detail, but what's important to see there is that you have to rise above open up the earthly mind in order to access this inner mind, and that only comes through spiritual growth, I think is the best term that we use now for it. But 
as you notice, may have noticed there, and as you'll be seeing as we go forward, is it's not about we're all going to pile on the rational or the the uh, lower earthly mind and say this is we're trying to we're trying to kick you out of the mind club. You keep it, like for example, like when you have a house, uh, you don't get rid of the foundation just because you have an upper floor or you don't get rid of the bottom floor. The point is not to get out of the lower mind and never return there. The point is to open up so that there's div- divine love and divine truth coming in to both. The, the, the higher mind can be a source of inspiration for the lower mind, and then the lower mind is working with the higher mind as it was always meant to in the divine design. So this